Jaya Radha Mahava Kunja Bihari Jaya Jaya Radha Mahava Kunja Bihari Jaya Jaya Gopi Janavallabha Girivara Dhamhari Jaya Gopi Jaya Gopi Janavallabha Girivara Dhamhari Jaya Gopi ये सौर नंदन ब्रजाध्यन हंध्यान हाया जस सौर नंदन ब्रजाध्यन हंध्यान हाया जमुन तीरा है वान चाहरी अमुनति जमुन तीरा है वाले चाहिए मुन तीरा जाए राह हम हाथ भाग कुंज भी हारे हैं Jai Radham Madhavam Kunjavi Hare Hai Kunjavi Hare Hai Gopi Janavallabha Girivaradha Hare Hai Giri Dhyaya Gopi Janavallabha Giri Varadha Hare Hai Yasura Nandana Vraja Janahanja Yasura Nandana Raja Jana Hanjana Jamuna Thira Vare Chahari Hamuna Thira Jamuna Thira Vare Chahari Hamuna Thira Hey Hey Jai Ratham Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Kunja Bihari Jai Radham Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Jai Pancha Tadva Pancha Tadva Pancha Tadva Jai Jaya Gaurani Thai Gaurani Thai Jaya Gaurani Thai Jaya Gaurani Thai Jaya Boom Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad Gaur Pimanande Chela Prabhu Pad Ki Jaya
Hare Krishna Maha Mantra Ki Jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Uh, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Srimad Bhagavatam, 8th Canto, Chapter 16, The Pale Vrata, Process of Worship, Text 24. Now, Kashyapa Muni is going to now instruct his wife on how to perform the Peyo Vrata worship. So he begins. Hmm. Sri Kashyapa Uvacha Eitan me Bhagavan Prista Rajakamasya Padmajaha Yarahate Pravakshami Vratam Keshava Tosanam Sri Kashyapa Uvacha Etan me Bhagavan Prista Prajakamasya Padmajaha Yarahate Pravakshami Vratam Keshava Toshanam Chant Kajakama Paj Majaha Yadahate Pravaksham He Vatam Keshava Toshanam Ladies Anyone else? Sri Kashyapa Uvacha. Kashyapa Muni said, Etat this may by me, Bhagavan, the most powerful, Prista, when he was requested. Praja Kamasaya, desiring offspring, Padmajaha, Lord Brahma, 
who is born of a lotus flower. Yat, whatever. Aha, he said, Te, unto you, Pravakshyami, I shall explain. Vritam, in the form of worship. Keshava Toshanam, by which Keshava, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is satisfied. Translation purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Dila Prabhupada Gita. Sri Kashapa Muni said, When I desired offspring, I placed inquiries before Lord Brahma, who was born from a lotus flower. Now I shall explain to you the same process Lord Brahma instructed me, by which Keshava, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is satisfied. Srila hmm. Prabhupada's purport. <clears throat> Here the process of devotional service is further explained. Kashapa Muni wanted to instruct the Diti in the same process recommended to him by Brahma for satisfying the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is valuable. The Guru does not manufacture a new process to instruct the disciple. The disciple receives from the Guru an authorized process received by the Guru from his Guru. This is called the system of disciplic succession. Evam parampara praptam imam rajasayo vidhu. This is the bona fide Vedic system of receiving the process of devotional service by which the Supreme Personality of Godhead is pleased. Therefore, to approach a bona fide guru or spiritual master is essential. The bona fide spiritual master is he who has received the mercy of his guru, who in turn is bona fide because he has received the mercy of his guru. This is called the Paramparam system. Unless one follows this Parampara system, the mantra one receives will be chanted with no purpose. Nowadays, there are so many rascal gurus who manufacture their mantras as a process for material advancement, not spiritual advancement. Still, the mantra cannot be successful if it is manufactured. Mantras in the process of devotional service have special power, provided they are received from the authorized person. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prastaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Iti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pasyatya De Satarine Vanchakalpa Taru Bhischam Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Jaisi Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasari Gaur Bhakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so something very essential is being given to us here, and that is there is a process. There is a process. It's an authorized process, and that process is given by the Supreme Personality of Godhead for the purpose of satisfying the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Two things. The process, and given by who? The Lord Himself and for the purpose of satisfying the Lord. So this process is authorized because it is coming from the Supreme Lord Himself. And not only the process, but the goal of the process is also being given to please the Supreme Lord. In this process, it's mentioned here that there is a way by knowledge is transmitted. And that, that transmission is called the Parampara system. That system which has become authorized by the Lord. Evaram Parampara Praktam Evam Raja Sayo Vidu. 
Krishna says, when the parampara system is broken, he was speaking to Arjun, I come to reestablish that. And you are the person who is now going to begin to relink the knowledge to the parampara system. And that was Krishna's statement to Arjun. We don't find Arjun within the disciplic succession of the Gaudiya Vaishnava, or do we find him in any system? But we understand one thing, that the, that the systems branch off in different directions, and therefore not only one person becomes a guru, but many persons can become guru from that same disciplic succession, and it branches in different directions. So what we have in our disciplic succession is the most prominent ones. They are the most prominent, and, they're, and the connection is, of course, you know, by chronological order also. So Krishna not only establishes the system, but when the system is broken, he, he reestablishes it. <laughs> How important it is to understand the transmission of knowledge it comes from Krishna. In other words, no one can manufacture, as Prabhupada says, a way of devotional life or a way of spiritual advancement. It is already there. All one has to do is learn the system and learn how to follow the system. The system cannot be recreated in a different way according to what we say, people's idea. They may say, well, time has changed, circumstances have changed. Therefore, the, the system has changed. I'm presenting something new. What you can present as new is how to explain the same knowledge in a different way. So sometimes we use this little cliche, old wine in new bottles. That's coming from Bhagavad time. It's the same substance, but the packaging is different. So this is what we have in today, in modern society, is that those who follow the disciplic succession carefully think of how to present that same knowledge that was presented to them according to time, place, and circumstance. Therefore, it's not changing. It's simply understanding the mentality of the time and presenting it in that particular way without changing the essence. And the essence is always the same, is to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotion. Hmm. That's, that never changes like that. And we see, and it happens, it even happened in our ISKCON movement, people get ideas, even these advanced devotees, on how to make it better. Hmm. I don't want to wrench, mention any names, but I was directly, and I say directly involved, with such arrangements where the idea was that the society is more Christian oriented. It's not people don't know much about India or the Vedic culture or, you know, Vedic knowledge. So why not package it in a Christian package and slightly change it to give some Christian connotations and present the same knowledge like that? And that was done. It was done. It was tried. And at, a per, at first, people thought, wow, that's a pretty good idea. And as, but as time went on, we saw that the value of what Prabhupada had given us was being minimized by the principles of another tradition where not, which were not pure devotional service, which were mixed devotional service, or more, almost like karmakanda in, in that sense. So after some time, we found we saw the whole thing just collapsed <laughs> because the authority wasn't there anymore. As soon as you break from the disciplic succession, just like a hand is very important because it serves the body in so many nice ways and it's necessary. But if the hand is cut off, although it looks like a hand, it can't do any of the work of a hand because it's not connected to the source anymore. So a person may come up with ideas, and this happens a lot, in fact it's quite fashionable in Kali Yuga, to create something new. 
And Srila Prabhupada very much um, cautioned us not to do this. And he made this a point in many of his talks and lectures. He said, you know, try to, as, even if you can't do anything more to, to spread Krishna conscious, don't change what I've given you. <laughs> don't change what I've given you. And uh, this is very important because not only is it gives it authority, but it get, it connects itself to the source. Without that authoritative connection, and just like if you have a, just like an electrician, sometimes he ha he sees that the electrical socket is not working, so he knows he can see the wire is connected to the socket, but he can't see where the break is. He understands somewhere there's a break in the line, so he has to find that break. And once he finds it, he fixes the break, and then the electricity flows again from the source, from the powerhouse. So using that example, that as long as we stay chaste to the authorities in the cyclic succession and follow that, then the effect of that activity will bring results automatically because it's sanctioned by Krishna like that. So here it mentions that a person who is in the disciplic succession, where is he getting his knowledge? He's getting it from his guru. Prabhupada used to say, I, ne I and people would give me so much credit for what I've done to spread Krishna consciousness. But what credit I have in say is the only thing credit I can say is that I didn't change anything that was given to me by my spiritual master. I simply presented it uh, in such a way that is understandable. That's all. <laughs> and that is, that is chastity to the authority and at the same time, and this is a very important point, because we find in Kali Yuga, people like to create new things all the time on all levels, spiritually, materially. Uh, this is just the way it goes. You'll see there's people today just thinking how to create a new product so people will buy it. Mm. Now just like you'll find that every item that is then available in the market has at least, I don't know, I, I can only guess, so many other items that are the same, but simply slightly packaged a little bit different, like that. Hmm. Um, one, of, one of my uh, dear God brothers, he was going, he was doing some construction work, so he needed some tile glue, glue for putting the tiles on the floor. So he had to ran out, and so he went to the store to buy it, and he's looking on the shelves, and he sees tile glue, and there's 19 different brands there. So, he's thinking, which one is the best, you know? So he goes to the shopkeeper and asks. And then the shopkeeper said, they're all the same. <laughs> but if you want to know the one everyone buys, it's this one, and he showed him the can. On the can, there's a half-naked girl on there. This is the one that sells the most. <laughs> but the contents is the same. <laughs> but nowadays, people not only change the outside, they change the inside. <laughs> so it's just to make it somewhat better. Just like when... Uh, uh, Balabhachari came to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he said, I have written a commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam which surpasses Sridhar Swami's commentary. He said that to, uh, and Lord Chaitanya immediately said, No, anyone who does not accept the Swami is a prostitute. <laughs> and that's all he said. He didn't want to hear anything else. In other words, Sridhar Swami is the authority. He is the, considered to be the supreme authority on Srimad Bhagavatam. And all the other commentaries 
commentaries use his commentary as a basis for making their commentaries. But they don't say, well, uh, my commentary is better than Sridhar Swami's, or my commentary is more interesting or more relevant than his. No, they present theirs from a different angle of vision. But Balabhachari was saying, mine is better. <laughs> we don't need Sridhar Swami's anymore. And, and Lord Chaitanya said, anyone who doesn't accept the Swami is a prostitute. Because another meaning for the word Swami means husband. That's another meaning for Swami is husband. So Lord Chaitanya used that example uh, to, you know, destroy the false pride of uh, Vallabhacharya. Of course, Vallabhacharya is a great personality and he did write many things, but he was proud and he, in his pride he was thinking he was superior to others like that. But you don't hear anyone in the simply say, secession saying, well, I've done it better than my guru. That's what happened in New Vrindavan. That the, the mood was, well, Prabhupada gave us this, but we got something better than what Prabhupada gave us, which is more relevant and more digestible to people in general. And that was the mood, that this is better. Not that it is a continuation with an idea to somehow or other preach in a slightly different way. No, it was a complete change. And the whole thing actually became asara, useless, like that. So this idea of um, change for the sake of betterment it's just the, the uh, desire of that person to somehow or other present themselves in a better way. But Prabhupada, he would say, uh, I didn't change anything, therefore they're giving me credit. What is my credit? I didn't change anything. <laughs> That's my credit. Now, from a practical point of view, you might say, well, he did change some things. <laughs> just like... Uh, generally, women in India, when Prabhupada came, and they don't really live in temples. Of course, there are women's ashrams, but that's different. But they don't come and mix in the temple with men. Mm -hmm. They can come to visit the temple, and they can worship the deity, but they can't live. There's no such thing as Brahmacharini ashram, <laughs> except in the women's ashrams, which are retired ashrams in the holy places, generally. But Prabhupada allowed women to come into the temple and take equal status in the worship and in the, and in the service with the men. Why? Because he saw that this is the culture. In order to uh, preach in this particular culture, he understood that he had to make this adjustment. Now, Bhakti Siddhanta, he didn't come to the West. So, well, Prabhupada did. So, this, the adjustment was not in the philosophy, but was in the practical application of the organizational way of how devotional service is to be done. So that was Prabhupada's adjustments, and he did that on a few levels also. And he said, because of that, I, be I have become successful in spreading Krishna consciousness. And so um, this idea of keeping the principle of Guru Parampara is such an important part here because we, you'll see what Prabhupada is saying here. It is authorized by Krishna. It was given to him by Brahma. Brahma taught it to him. Now he's teaching the same thing to his wife, Aditi, without any change. And what is the result? That if you follow it, Accordingly, you will please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Um, Mahadi Toshanam, that's the, that's the goal, to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Godhead. Uh, Prabhupada would explain, when someone asked him, what is the most important verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam? He would point to that verse from the first canto, second chari, chapter. Um, I can't remember the verse, but the last two lines are Hari Toshanam. 
Hari means the supreme, and Toshana means one who gives pleasure to the supreme. So all occupational duties are useless unless they are executed in order to please the supreme personality of Godhead. Now here, Prabhupada also says something really interesting. One may receive a mantra, but the mantra will have no purpose if it's not given in disciplic succession. Or, just like gurus, they manufacture some kind of mantra. And they put the names of God and a combination of other things in there. Sometimes they put their own name in. <laughs> Prabhupada talks about one ashram in India. Um, he said he was visiting there and he was talking to the, the disciples in the ashram. And he said, well, what is your practice? He said, we think of our guru. He said, that is what his instruction, he said, we think of our guru, that is it, that is our, as long as we remember our guru, we are engaged nicely in his service and we are making progress, <laughs> just to think of the guru. But what is the guru's instruction? To think of him. <laughs> but where is the guru, who is the guru? Is he in disciplic succession? No. <laughs> He's a manufactured guru who has come up with, he has mystic power, he has some some shakti, and he speaks, and people come, and then they get involved, and, and then whatever he tells them, they follow. <laughs> and because people don't have any understand understanding, therefore, before you take a spiritual master, and this is important, you have to learn what is a disciple, and what is a spiritual master? There's one particular book <clears throat> that was compiled. What it is, is a compilation of all of Prabhupada's statements, Jai Sisi Panchatattva. <clears throat> this book was a, a wonderful book. I used to make this book a required reading for all my disciples before initiation. It's called the, the Spiritual Master and the Disciple. <clears throat> and what it is, it's a compilation of all of Prabhupada's statements on Guru Tattva, put into categories within the, the larger category. And then uh, these are verses from the Bhagavatam, verses and from um, other scriptures also. <clears throat> and it's all about what is the duty of a disciple what is the relationship between a disciple and a guru? What is the, the relationship between a guru and a disciple? <clears throat> and that knowledge is fundamental because when you take a spiritual master, you should know what you're getting into. <laughs> and not just, well, well, he's cool, he speaks nicely. <laughs> he's a... He's a guru kula, <laughs> cool guru. <laughs> yeah, so there was one person that they gave that one guru, they gave him that name. They called him Guru Kula because he's a cool guru. <laughs> but then, you know, because he speaks nice, he dances nice, he's got this uh, whatever shakti. And, uh, but that's not, that's not the criteria. The, the criteria for accepting a spiritual master is, can this per, will this person take me back to Godhead? Is he qualified to take me back to Godhead? And therefore, Nahari Bhakti Vilas, which was instituted by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who told Sanatan Goswami, speak about what is a disciple and what is a guru, and also give an understanding of how to give that understanding. In other words, a time period. Therefore, when you first come, you don't get a spiritual master the first day. There is a time where after pra practicing for some time, then you aspire. And then there's an aspiration period which lasts from anywhere from six months to a year. It used to be six months when I joined in those days. Now it's from a year, and generally you aspire for a year, and then you get to know the spiritual master. You ask him questions. He watches you to see if you're actually coming up to the standard. And both the guru and the disciple are making a decision. Is this 
person my guru? Is this disciple my disciple? And then that, that evaluation period takes place. And then when it becomes clear, then, then initiation takes place. So really, initiation is what consummates what's already been established. It's not like when you get initiation, that's the beginning of your relationship. No. Relationship starts with the aspiration. And then, and then there's no question of changing later. And I've seen that. And there was one, I was directly involved in that one also. One very nice devotee, she was a book distributor. She came up to me and said, you know, Maharaj, I want to change my spiritual master. I like this other spiritual master better. I want him to be my spirit. I said, well, you can make him your shikshu guru. She said, no, I want to, I want to get initiated by him. I said, you can't do that. you got a spiritual master. And not only you got one, he's one of the best. I mean, he's, his, his character and a history of his devotion in, in ISKCON is exemplary. She said, oh, well, no, I want this other one. I said, you can't do that. It's offensive. She didn't listen. <laughs> uh, I called her spiritual master. We talked on the phone. I tried to talk on the phone, but he didn't want to hear. He was brokenhearted that his, when he found out his, spirit, his disciple was going to another guru without even getting his permission, just doing it on her own. So after some time, she, and she took initiation from this other spiritual master, who was also an ISKCON guru. Not long after that, he fell down. Why? Because he broke the principles. You can't reinitiate someone who's already initiated. <laughs> and he was gone, and he's never come back since. And then she came running to me, Maharaj, what do I do? <laughs> so in there and there I am, now I have to solve this problem. So I thought, all right, there's, your, your spiritual master is very merciful. She was embarrassed. I said, you run to him, fall at his feet, beg for his forgiveness, and ask him to accept you back. And she did it. And, she, and he, he did it, he immediately accepted her back. And then her devotional service really took off after that. She, uh, she became even more advanced after that. She made a big mistake, but somehow or other, by the Krishna's arrangement, she was able to correct the mistake. And then, so here's an example of how that when one takes a spiritual master, it's a lifetime thing. We have shikshu guru also, and shikshu guru means that one can get relevant instructions from another person who is on the same level as one spiritual master. I've, you know, my disciples have come up to me and asked me if I can take this person as a shikshu guru, and I say, I decide, because unless that person is in the same mood as I am, although he might be in Krishna consciousness, I would say no. But when the mood is the same, then I'll say, fine. Because gurus have their different moods and how they present Krishna consciousness. So we're trying to instruct and guide in a certain way. So that consideration was there. And so, um, but that is an authorized process. Shikshu Guru acts to support and to help that, that disciple to make advancement, especially in, in uh, ISKCON society where the spiritual master is not always present in, with his disciples. And because the tradition is that usually in the Vedic tradition, the, the disciples would always stay with the guru throughout life. So they were always there. But then we have a different phenomena now. We have a worldwide society where the spiritual masters are in different places around the world and the gurus, the disciples are also in different places. So Shikshu Guru is an authorized process, so it's highly recommended in ISKCON. It's not 
mandatory, but it's helpful like that. It's helpful to have that. But if you don't feel you need it, you're getting everything from your spiritual master, and you're, you're nice. It's, it's fixed. It's, but this is the process. But back to the essential principle here that the gurus follow their guru who teaches the same thing without changing, and therefore the, spirit, the disciple is getting the same thing. Prabhupada would use the example of a mango. A mango is on a very high part of the tree. Now, if you shake the tree to get the mango down, you'll, uh, the, the mango might bang onto the different branches, and then when it gets down, it might be a little damaged or even completely damaged. So, handing it down from one branch to another is the principle of disciplic succession. Then the fruit comes in the same way that it came from the in the top of the tree. So, so um, yeah, so therefore, it's important that the disciples ask questions to their spiritual master in order to get clarification in the process of devotional service. And that's important. And the last thing here, Prabhupada said, mantras in the process of devotional service have special power, provided they receive from the authorized person. Just like the Gayatri Mantra. You can find the Gayatri Mantra written in books, but you can't chant Gayatri Mantra and expect to get the benefit of Gayatri Mantra unless it's given to you by the spiritual mantra. That is called Guru Mantra. Sometimes people want to know what is Guru Mantra. Guru Mantra is Gayatri Mantra. Krishna, the Hare Krishna Mantra is available for everyone. Everyone can chant Hare Krishna, even those who are not devotees. But, but for actually making further advancement, that Brahminical initiation is given and then one gets Guru Gayatri, or he gets Gayatri from Guru, and then one can increase the quality of their devotional service through the power of proper chanting of the, of the, uh, of the uh, uh, Gayatri Mantra, especially one's chanting. Now, those who want to perfect their chanting and are second initiated, work on your Gayatri Mantra to chant it very, very properly because that will give you more Shakti and more ability and the quality of your chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And it also reveals to you each of the principles that the Gayatri Mantra is teaching. And it's a very powerful mantra, the Gayatri Mantra. <clears throat> okay, I'll stop there and then see if there's any comments or questions. We got um, Marco. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. So, so, so do do we actually have um, a, a diksha, diksha parampara? Because they say that we have shik, that shiksha is the one that that comes to to this. Uh, <clears throat> our parampara system is mostly shiksha, and how it works is that that personality who is prominent and transmitting. The knowledge at that particular time becomes the next in the line of the parampara system. So, <clears throat> for instance, you have <clears throat> Gorky Shore does Babaji Maharaj, and uh, or you have Bhakti Vinod Thakur. It's a better example. Well, Bhakti Vinod Thakur's guru is not Jagannath does Babaji Maharaj. It's uh, Hari Bilal, I think it is. Vipin Bilal, Vipin Bilal, yeah, thank you. Vipin Bilal, so where is it, do you hear much about Vipin Bilal? No. But Jagannath Das Babaji Maharaj was more prominent at the time. And also, Bhakti Binota Kaur received Shiksha instructions from him. So, how that's decided? Hmm. And that's a little bit of a question. 
how it comes about, we can. But it's it always, as Prabhupada say, that person who was prominent at that time for transmitting the transcendental knowledge from disciple to guru, from guru to disciple, like that. So our line is mostly shiksha. There's a mixture of both, <laughs> but mostly shiksha. But it says in the Chaitanya Charitamrita that shiksha and diksha are equal. They're two features of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Both generally have the same, but one connects one to the succession and the other one helps one in their execution of devotional service. One is given relevant knowledge. Both are given relevant knowledge, but one is the one, the diksha is required. Just like there is a movement saying, we don't need to get initiated, and just, we just have to follow Srila Prabhupada, that's all. Yeah, because if we follow Srila Prabhupada, then we're in the disciplic succession, that's all. But you have to get uh, someone connected to Srila Prabhupada in order to formalize your relationship with Srila Prabhupada in according to the, this principle of the cyclic succession. That's, otherwise, anybody can jump in there and say, I'm a spiritual master or a disciple without authority. Therefore, this initiation process is required. Hmm. Like that. Does that help? Yes, thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. <clears throat> thank you, Guru Maharaj, for this really important class to for us to understand the principle of uh, Guru Tattva. I think uh, clarity on this issue is very important, especially for all of us and especially for our new bhaktas and bhaktins. So thank you for pointing out that we should be well versed in understanding what is disciple, what is guru, what is the duties, responsibilities, so that we are very clear when we take initiation. Yeah, some people think, as long as I give him a gift on his birthday, that's good. <laughs> that's, that's it. I'm there for Vyasa Puja every year. I always show up. <laughs> and I see... Well, he has socks with holes in him. I give him some new socks, and boy, that's great service. Huh? I must be one of the more advanced disciples. <laughs> yeah, people think if I can just give money or presents, that's that's guru seva. It's not. <laughs> So I was thinking back to the mantra given by the Guru and how important it is to receive it in disciplic succession because as Your Holiness was lecturing, my mind went back to um, an Indian family which used to very frequently come to the temple. Very nice people. They love to come, they love to take part in Kirtan. And then when uh, there was a home program, we visited them, they told us, we have received an Ishtadev mantra from our Guru. I said, what Ishtadev mantra? He said, he asked us, who is your favorite God? And so we said, Krishna. He said, okay, I'll give you a mantra of Krishna. All you have to do is chant this mantra every day. And I said, anything else? They said, no, nothing else. We can just carry on. And I said, so that means every disciple gets their Ishtadev mantra? They said, yes. If you say you like Shiva, he will give you that mantra. You say Ganesh, he will give you that mantra. And any other restrictions, rules, no, just carry on. So I said, so what brings you to our Hare Krishna temple? Oh, we like the pure atmosphere, we like the peacefulness. And this way we have best of both worlds. So I said, okay. <laughs> Yeah, you can stay in the material world. You, you'll have a lot of worlds to experience also. <laughs> you'll be experiencing so many universes. <laughs> Not only the best of both worlds, other worlds are, are waiting for you also. <laughs> and that was it. 
they had made up their mind, this is how they are going to do it and this is good for them. I wanted to say, you know, this mantra is not going to prevent rebirth, you know. If you want to take birth again and again, you can chant this mantra. But it didn't seem as though they were even, you know, willing to think about all that. Mm -hmm. well, <coughs> this is Kali Yuga. Mm. There's always somebody else ready to manufacture a process. Mm. <laughs> Prabhupada used to say there is... Uh, and there is a, what is it, a, Jat, a Jagat Guru, he's coming every day from India to the West. <laughs> and I'm probably was being facetious in what he was saying is that, you know, India, many of them think, oh, the West is a good place. People will be, I can have disciples, I can have followers, I can have so many things. And so they see what the other Gurus have done and they've, kind of like get inspired by that and then they add their own little program to it to make it unique. Mm. You know, and then they go out and preach this stuff mm. and some of them have shakti and some of them have some some ability. They also, they also maybe know the shastras, at least memorized it, maybe not know it, but memorized it. Mm. And uh, then they get a following. Mm. It's, it's, it's right, it, this is Kali Yuga. That's why Prabhupada, why is Prabhupada making these points in, the, in this, these purports all the time? Mm -hmm. And in his lectures, because it goes on all the time. And Prabhupada said, it's the birthright of every living entity to come in contact with a bona fide guru and execute the process and become successful. Now that birthright has been usurped by these cheaters. <laughs> Instead of giving them the genuine stuff, they're giving them something different. And people, because they don't know what is a real spiritual master, they go by the external appearances or some, exter some show of words. But a guru has to be an acharya. Acharya means he's following his guru, and he's also practicing what he preaches. It's not that you simply preach and you don't practice, you know. Then that is called pretense. Acharya means by example. Hmm. So if the guru is not, if he's saying one thing and he's doing something different, then that's not acharya, and that's not guru. Hmm. And there's so many, so many today, so. You can probably find a few in Slovenia, too. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> Self-styled gurus. Some of them, you know, they mix some material principles with spiritual ideas, and they give you some moral instructions, and you become more expert in being successful in the world you know you you know you take your you they give you a little understanding of higher mental powers so and you can use these mental powers to be good better at what you're doing materially mm -hmm. mm. that's very very fashionable nowadays and i even see some of our and some of our members in our society, they go to these people to get additional ideas on how to do things. When everything is given by Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada covered everything. Bhakti Chiru Maharaj, he made it a point very strongly to, to illustrate that Prabhupada has given us everything. And he explained it in very careful lectures, how everything is there in Prabhupada's books. You don't need to go anywhere else. It's all there. <laughs> and those who follow Prabhupada, they must be transparent to Srila Prabhupada's teachings. Not that we, those who are followers of Srila Prabhupada are in a position of spiritual masters have to create something new or something different. 
And that happens. There's been a few uh, members in our society who went that went off in that direction, and they're no longer around anymore. This is very essential, this principle here. Both mantras and gurus have to follow the system as given by the Supreme Lord himself. He is the author, author, author of this Param, Param system. Krishna, it's coming from Krishna. And what did Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu do? He was a Supreme Personality Godhead. He took a spiritual master. <laughs> Ishwara Puri. Krishna took Sandipani Muni. The Supreme Lord himself, who is the source of all spiritual masters, when he comes to this world to teach us, he shows by example the importance of taking a spiritual master. Although he doesn't have to. <laughs> That's how important it is. <laughs> So why are people so ready to take on these cheater gurus? Because they, because they give them something material, because that's what they want. Prabhupada used to say, if you want the real thing, you'll, you'll, come, you'll get the real thing. If you want something less, you'll get that. You get a spiritual master according to what you want. If you want to be materially happy and spiritually advanced at the same time, there will be a guru who will give you something similar to that. No, there's all kinds of gurus, 108 varieties. <laughs> Just like you, you go to the store and you, you see how many different kinds of shoes there are. <laughs> There's, there's even more gurus than styles of shoes. <laughs> So-called gurus. You have to be careful. That's why if we stay chaste to Srila Prabhupada and follow him carefully, then when we hear something from an outside, it's clear that it's either bona fide or not bona fide based on what Prabhupada has given us. And Prabhupada has proved he's a spiritual master. He's shown by his example and by his uh, ability to make other devotees pure devotees also. He's not only a pure devotee, but he's also created other pure devotees. That's the... That, that's the that's the evidence that Srila Prabhupada is a powerful spiritual master. Okay, so anything else? Yeah. Oh yeah, we have uh, Ananta Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, <coughs> thank you. Uh, for <clears throat> this very pointing out, pointing out this very important topic about Guru Tattva, and you mentioned a uh, quote, uh, mentioned uh, reference from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita about Shiksha and Diksha Guru being non-different, it's the same Guru Tattva, right? And um, it seems that in uh, Iskon this um, principle that uh, Shiksha Guru is this equal, is not so much understood or applied. Yes. It seems that the emphasis on the Diksha Guru is high, high, highly unbalanced, according to the, comparing to the, to, to the Shiksha. Um, and sometimes then we have this situation that, you know, you mentioned already, that we, we have devotees, disciples who, you know, just hear from Diksha Guru and they, don't recognize or aware of Shiksha network devotees who can, which usually are most prominent in their lives. Right. Right? You know, from the beginning, only Shiksha network is cultivating uh, devotees from the very beginning, right? From the right. preachers, from the, you right. know, senior, senior and peer de uh, devotees. 
And we have this book of Shiva Maharaj, Shiksha Guru, and especially I will emphasize... Prabhupada Martin, what is that? Prabhupada, what is it called? The, the, the guru who can, who you first... First, yeah. first person you... Vartma Padarshika, yeah. yeah. That's also a guru, yeah. Yeah, right. So, uh, and also I will uh, emphasize the Iskun Disciple Course, which uh, manifested because of this, this unbalanced uh, situation and the, the need to, that the devotees can understand mm -hmm. uh, the Guru Tattva in a very balanced way. Uh, and uh, that I, is, this topic is very much... I agree with you 100%. Shiva Ram Maharaj many years ago, made a proposal to formalize Shiksha in our mm. society. And he wrote a book on it called Shiksha Guru. He wanted to make it just as formal as the Diksha type of initiation. But it didn't, it didn't go. It was rejected. For, well, I don't know, we don't even know the reasons why it was rejected. We could come up with some reasons, but... Um, yeah, that imbalance is there, and it's making our society weak. Hmm. Making our society weak. Because Maharaj's point was, if you hear from others, and it's not done in a formalized way, then you can choose and not choose. But when you, you choose your shikshu guru, and it becomes formalized, just like you formalize your relationship with your Diksha Guru, then the instructions become just as important as the instructions of the Diksha Guru. But there's an added principle where Shiksha Guru's instructions can never be contrary to Diksha Guru and has to be validated by Diksha Guru if there's some question that there is some differences. Yeah. That has to be validated. Yeah. But yeah, you, you, you brought up a very essential point. Maybe we'll sooner or later come to that understanding that the need is there to formalize this shiksha in our society. It's important. But now we just tell devotees, if you get instructions and guidance from anyone outside of your spiritual master, other than the temple authorities, then you should... Um, you should take it seriously and follow it and not simply just pick and choose according to what you like or what you don't like. See, that's where formalization will, will not allow that to happen. You know. yeah. So, yeah. I, I recommend disciples to find shiksha gurus because it helps me <laughs> because otherwise I have to worry about them all the time <laughs> and then it becomes hard and just like we see now devoted decided, gurus who have thousands of disciples they can't, can't take care of them all of them so we, we ask this, but the disciples to take responsibility and get, get help in the local areas so now we've set up this mentorship system, which is somewhat an idea that is somewhat similar to Shiksha Guru, but not the same. Yeah. And even that's a little bit loose. And yeah, so yeah, and see, as you mentioned, it's equally and equally powerful. Guru Shiksha and Diksha Guru are equally powerful. Thank you. Yeah, and that also gives a chance for those who are qualified to come up to that stage and be Shiksha Gurus. And then they, that'll be for their benefit also, to take on that responsibility. Does that help? I don't know. Yes, thank I you. Did, I think it's, I was just it's a big topic, yes. It's a big topic. I was just re repeating what you said, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Guru Maharaj, I have a question about, you know, Shiksha Guru. We would like that all our bhaktins, bhaktas, everybody takes on a mentor and works with the mentor. And um, that way they have the Guru ultimately from whom they're taking shelter. But what is the 
uh, agreement between the bhaktin and the mentor in terms of following the instructions because if I'm a bhaktin and I say, well, I don't like this instruction, you're not my guru, you're just my mentor, then the whole thing gets diluted, isn't it? Well, why take on a mentor if you're not going to follow it? <laughs> right. It's, it's kind of hypocritical. Mm. The purpose of having that relationship is to follow. <laughs> okay. You can question mm -hmm. the instructions or the guidance, mm. but you can't reject it. Mm. You can question it for clarification or for adjustment, but you can't reject it. Right, right. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Should we continue? Um, I will, yeah, I will read this. In Srimad Bhagavatam 6, 7, 23, okay, we can read, Worshipping Shukra Acharya with devotion, being devotees, being devotees to Guru, the demons may take away my abode also. Question, how devotion to demoniac Guru by demons can give positive results? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, not spiritual results, but materially results. <laughs> mm. That's what they're getting, material results. He's a material guru. <laughs> he has some shakti. He's powerful. He performs austerity. So taking away the abode of the demigods is is not... It's just some shakti. Just like nowadays, the demons are in control in some places around the world, many places, because they perform austerities, the demons. And they have their gurus also. <laughs> just like we have our disciplic succession, the gurus have their, what they call, hierarchy. Yeah, one level, and there's a higher level, and then you have like that. So you have people who are very demoniac, who are very powerful. And as Prabhupada says, they, have, they are very intelligent materially. And Prabhupada uses the word duskritina. Intelligent with, with, with the wrong purpose, but they're intelligent. Just like what's going on in the world today now, many of it's orchestrated by the demons, but it's very intelligently orchestrated. <laughs> Extremely intelligently orchestrated. Because they think these things out and they are very they know how to manipulate material energy. Like that. And they also worship. They have their they have their deities they worship. They worship ghosts, they worship spirits, they worship, um, sometimes they worship Shiva. <laughs> Shiva also accepts worships from, from the demons. Mm -hmm. They get their power. <laughs> but it's material. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Hare Krishna.